Alright guys, welcome back to another video and in this tutorial, what I want to do is I just want to make sure that everyone's Android Studio is set up and working correctly and the best way to do this is actually build a really simple basic Android Studio project and run it and if we get um, any errors or if we come across any issues I'll show you guys how to fix them as well. So the first thing that you always do whenever you create a new project is just click start a new Android Studio project. You guys probably could figure that out. Now I'll talk you guys through this um, real quick but again this is just an example to make sure that everything is working correctly so if I am kind of running over everything kind of quick or if you don't fully understand everything that I'm doing don't worry we're going to be coming back to everything cover it in detail later on but again let me explain just real quick what's going on now this of course the application name is not only the project name so it's not only you know whenever you're browsing your computer you can identify which project you're working on but this application name is actually the name of the app whenever you put it in the Google Play Store. So again, for this one, we can just keep the default name because this is, like I said, a really stupid example. Just to make sure everything's working, we're not actually going to be selling this. However, when you do develop an app that you are eventually going to sell, take some time and um, think of a good application name because it does matter. Now, the company domain, again, yours is probably going to be like, I don't know what it was to start with, probably like example.org or example.com or something. But the company domain is how you identify each application. Now, as you can see, whenever you type in a domain name, okay, come on cursor, the new boston.com, dot cinnamon, all right, dot com, you see that the package name fills in automatically and this is called a reverse domain notation so whenever you're going to a website you would type the name followed by dot com the package name is com dot the new boston dot the application name so again this is just an identifier to say okay there's a lot of apps named my application on the google play store how do we know which one is bucky's well that's the one with the com the new boston so again this is just the name of your app your website and then once you fill in both those things it fills in the rest of the crap for you so ugh, got like phlegm in my throat so click next and this is actually an easy screen to understand it says okay you're developing an app for the phone and tablet this is all we're going to be doing for this tutorial series I'm not going to show you guys how to develop anything for the TV or wear now wear is pretty much anything that you can wear on your body like um I don't know if they have uh, uh, like glasses yet but this is like smart watches and stuff like that so again, this tutorial series is just going to cover how to make apps for the phone and tablet. So select that, and also I probably should mention this. The minimum SDK, you probably either want to put 8 or whatever the default is. Now, this is, um well you guys um, know like the different versions of Android that came out. Of course, the later ones are the newest ones but the reason that you just don't want to go ahead and develop for the latest one is because a bunch of people still have these older versions so if you say okay well I got you know I don't know maybe you got KitKat so that's great but whenever you put your app on the Google Play Store check this out it's only gonna run on 25% of the devices so if you go all the way back to Froyo this was a really popular SDK whenever you develop apps for this then it's gonna run on pretty much all devices unless someone has like an old ancient phone now if you're like okay well with that logic and understanding let me just go ahead back to the original API right there and uh, I should be good to go well you don't want to do that either because whenever you make an app that's compatible with all these ancient operating systems is going to involve a lot more code and a lot more testing and it's going to be pretty much pointless because no one even has these anyways so again a good um, median for this is to go to API 8 at the time of this recording again this is probably gonna change as time goes on but right now I'll stick with API 8 and this make sure that you cover pretty much every device that anyone would have and you don't have to write any useless code so let me adjust in my seat a little bit here so now our next choice is okay add an activity to mobile so we probably should understand what the heck is an activity of course, this is like the two second tutorial, so I'm just gonna explain it really simple. Ugh. Okay, probably should edit that out. You know, I'll probably just leave it in. Too lazy. <laughs> All right, so right now, just think of an activity as a screen. So if you're making an app for, I don't know, a website, 
the home screen would be its own activity the about section would be another activity so again it's a little more complex than that but for now just think of an activity as a screen on your app or a view so for this demonstration we're just gonna have blank activity so what this is going to do is it's going to set up a template app with one screen on it. Perfect for testing. So now, of course, we need to give our activity a name. Why do we need to give our activity a name? Well, that's just because whenever you're making an app with a bunch of different screens, you obviously need a way to identify all of them because if you want to say, okay, switch to the home screen, switch to the, I don't know, my profile screen. Well, this is just how your app is going to identify each one and know what's going on. And we'll talk about the layout um, and all these different things later on. The layout is pretty much how things are positioned on the screen. And all this other stuff is kind of, um, you know, that's not the point of this tutorial. We'll cover that later on. But for now, just remember that this main screen is called Main Activity. Simple enough and finish. Alright guys, so after Android Studio is finished setting up and preparing your project, you're going to have something that looks like this. And if you have an error right now, then I know what error that you're getting, so I'm going to show you guys how to fix that in just a second. But for now, I just want to warn you guys, even though it looks kind of overwhelming, trust me, this is set up perfectly for making apps in, in about seven tutorials or something once we cover the entire interface this is gonna feel just like home and all the stuff that feels overwhelming right now is uh, actually gonna you're probably gonna find it very useful but for now I'm gonna mention a couple of things that are gonna make your life a whole lot easier the first thing is if you ever want to access that SDK manager from here then what you do is you go up to this little thing it kinda looks like the little I think his name's Andy the Android. Looks like he's sitting in this bucket with a down arrow. But this is the Android SDK Manager. So click that. And again, you don't have to close out of your entire project to open up the SDK Manager anymore. And I actually want to show you guys one more package that um I forgot to tell you guys to install later on. I mean earlier. So if you open up the SDK Manager and you scroll all the way down, then make sure that you have this package installed right here. It's the Intel x86 emulator accelerator and again I installed it already but it takes like two seconds to install but what this is is basically whenever we develop these sample apps what we're gonna do is we're gonna run those on pretty much emulators or they're pretty much like little virtual phones that we can use for testing and those are kind of slow so that package just helps speed up the entire process and um, makes it run a little bit smoother and faster. So if you guys wanted to know what that was, there you go. If you didn't, well, uh, you know, sorry for wasting your time. But that's how you get to the Android SDK Manager from here. Now another thing that I want to do is mention this. A lot of you guys probably have an error that popped up that says, okay, I can't find the Android SDK or I don't know where the Java JDK is. You got to help me out because Android Studio won't run um, how it's configured right now. So if Android Studio has a problem finding either of those things, then go to File and go to Project Structure. And then from here it says, okay, the Android SDK location is where. And actually, if this, if you see like, I think if you get an error, it shows like some red text or something. But in order to navigate to it, if it's not set up correctly, just click these little three little dots on the right hand side and then you can say okay you obviously aren't looking in the right place this is where I downloaded my Android SDK and the same thing with a Java development kit or the JDK make sure that the directory ends with the JDK in your version number and make sure that the Android SDK ends with SDK so again if you um, downloaded it to a different um, directory than I did in the example then you're gonna have these errors so that is where you fix them depending on wherever you downloaded it so mine is correct so I'm just gonna close out of that and I probably should mention this as well alright so just so every um, user is looking at the same thing I'm gonna change the app theme right here because this typically changes from user to user so make sure I'll show you guys if you click on app theme right here then the theme is pretty much the overall look and feel of your app so switch yours to material light and click OK and as you can see your interface changes a little bit again this is just so everyone um, is looking at the same thing and you're not watching this tutorial and are like okay mine looks different than yours and that's weird now the last thing I want to mention before we actually run this is this 
right now whenever I'm teaching these tutorials, you see that we have minimal